how much should you have in equities and how much in fixed income? For fixed income, you could read a bank account, although technically it does mean bonds, uh, or exchange traded funds, which are very much bond aligned. Well, this is an image which isn't particularly controversial, uh, and it's from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. And because it's not controversial, I've poached it, and it says, depending on the years to retirement, uh, this is how much you might have in equities and how much in fixed income. Of course, a lot depends upon what you plan to do with that capital. If you happen to be independently wealthy and you're at retirement and you want to leave a lot of money for your young grandchildren, for instance, uh, you might say, well, actually, I'm going to be totally in equities because the money that I've got set aside is actually not for myself and for retirement. It's actually for my children's future and they, they're relatively young. So I'm going to look at it as if they've got 40 plus years to retirement. Whereas, of course, if all the money you've got is your own and for your retirement, you'll tend to have more in the bank. Uh, and that's, as I say, none of this is particularly controversial. One of the reasons why going into retirement you have more in the bank and in cash uh, or in fixed income with low volatility, make sure it's low volatility, is because of what happened, for instance, last February, where the markets fell 20% within a month. How would you like it if one month before retirement you lost 20% of your pension pot? That's why investment is always said to carry risks and you want to have bank accounts. Even the mighty Microsoft fell some 20 odd percent. Uh, again, I'm probably teaching very much the basics for most of you, but I just thought I'd share that just so you get a bigger perspective on what the point of investing is and how much should be uh, set aside for retirement.